guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Roxanne. We are backstage at 2000 Trees Festival. I'm delighted to say joined now by Laura Jane Grace. How are you, Laura? I'm excellent. Good, I'm glad to hear. Welcome back to the UK. Let's start with that because obviously it's been a minute for obvious reasons since you're allowed to actually come over here and play for the people. That's gotta be a good feeling. You know, UK shows are always pretty good for you, right? Yes, very much so. And I'm very happy to be here. This show in particular has been like three years in the making. Insane, with, isn't so, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. a way to anticipate a festival. <laughs> Just keeps going, keeps going. Um, obviously you've been keeping busy during the whole pandemic and all that kind of stuff the last couple of years. Let's talk about the EP from last year, first of all, because uh, yeah, really, really interesting ideas in that when did that one come Kind of start to develop was that just uh, an at-home project was that songs you already kind of had ready to go when did that develop for you? that was like fully born during the pandemic oh, right, lockdown okay. period i broke my foot in november of 2020 and uh, wasn't able to walk for about three months so most of the songs were written during that period of time when i was absolutely losing my mind from boredom <laughs> i mean it's one good way to kill the boredom. did that genuinely help i feel like that should actually help really it's almost therapeutic isn't it writing music sometimes well it's it definitely popular. makes you sit down and work yes <laughs> <laughs> a distraction if nothing else so distraction <laughs> makes a lot of sense. I mean, the last time we kind of spoke actually was like uh, doing one of these many, many Zoom calls I've done over the last couple of years. But that was when the album came out, you kind of surprise dropped uh, Stay Alive. And that was, again, a really kind of interesting project to put out during lockdown. How are you reflecting on that now that, you know, it's a little bit of time away? What were the kind of learnings of that whole process and, and how it's been received, I guess, by the audience as well? Um, well, it's strange because like right now, you know, I did a month out in the US in May and then I've been over here for about three weeks. And um, this is the first touring for it. So it's wow. first time out and feeling, you know, you never really know how a record feels until you play it live. Yeah. So it's been my first time to really reflect on it and see what songs work in the live context and uh, kind of understand it in that way. So a totally unique album process in that way. But I love the Stay Alive record just as a document because it was recorded the way it was, fully analog recording. And it's more, more of like a snapshot of that period of time that everyone experienced, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, has anything surprised you about actually getting out on stage? Are there any moments in that record where you thought, oh, I didn't expect this one to go go off at this precise minute? Anything <laughs> kind of taking you back there? Um, I think it's oftentimes how well the more quiet songs work in the really loud environments like right. this that has been su surprising. Yeah, I remember you said at the time when you when you're putting that record out as well that originally you'd kind of intended some of those songs to be for a new Against Me record. So I guess the question is, have you now thought about other new songs that, like earmarked for against me if you kind of put them to one side or what's kind of stage with that well i mean that's that was the thing is that you know that that record came out in 2020 yeah and was recorded in the summer of 2020 but most of those songs were written over 2018 2019 right, sure. so the idea of like if we would have held on to those songs and then you know with, with vinyl delays now that would mean oh, that they God, wouldn't yeah. be coming out until 2023 or yeah, 2024 yeah. so there's just like I don't know, they, it would have felt like they were a little stale by then. So at this point, I've already written an album's worth of new songs and wow. you know, looking forward to the future and hopefully recording sometime later this year or early next year. So, ah, very yeah. exciting. Is that, is that just for yourself or are you doing that with the band as well? What's the kind of... We'll see what happens. Bit of both maybe? But yeah, both? hopefully. <laughs> All these opportunities. It's good. Well, it's good, it's good moment to kind of reflect a little bit because I did realize we are, I think we've either just passed it or we're coming up to it, but it's 20 years since Against Me's debut album, right? This year. We must be hitting that 20th anniversary. It was, uh, it was this past March. This past actually. March. There yeah, we yeah. go. So, so we it is, it's been 20 it years and three months or so. My <laughs> God. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Are you one for reflecting on those moments or do you just like to keep pushing forward with the new music? I mean, it's, it's definitely a landmark, isn't it? I think sometimes life forces you to reflect. Right. And specifically, like, this tour is the 20 year mark since the first time I came over and wow. toured Europe, UK. So, and it's been cool. Like uh, the people that I'm traveling with are the first people that I traveled with over here oh, wow. and first people that brought against me over. And then, you know, have just run into a lot of old friends that really nice. saw on that first tour. So it's definitely like, I don't know. It, it sometimes, again, life forces you to reflect. Absolutely. It's something I always like to ask when we hit these kind of anniversary of albums is, is not so much what's kind of changed, because we can see musically all the various different projects that you've done, but is there anything you learned making that first Against Me record all those years ago that has actually stayed with you? You know, you only make your debut once. Is there anything you learned in that process? You go, oh, yeah, I'm going to remember that when I'm making records in the future. I think it's like, it's funny how it works where, like, you almost have to come full circle where the first time you make a record it's a really rushed process and you kind of have to surrender to it and just not overthink it and not care too much and hope it comes out for the best and then you end up having more time with a record and you get more involved in it and you push it to the point where maybe you get 
your head up your own ass a little bit, you know, and you need to pull away from that. And then you kind of come back full circle where it's like, just go do it for fun and don't overthink it. And you're back where you started in strange ways. You hey, know? good lessons to learn along the way, for sure. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, before I let you go and enjoy your weekend, get ready for set and all that stuff, what other kind of plans looking like for the rest of the year? We know no, like more new music getting worked on, more live stuff as well, I take it. I mean, you must be just desperate to get out as many stages as possible. At this yeah, point. I, you know, I was supposed to do a, a Canada tour in March and that ended up getting canceled or not canceled, postponed. So I do that in September now, but I have like one or two other US shows um, in August and then in November. But other than that, it's just really working on new music. Man, exciting times ahead, exciting times ahead. It's always a pleasure to see you here in the UK. Always great to chat with you. And yeah, enjoy the weekend, enjoy the show. We'll catch up with you soon, I'm Thank sure. Thank you. Good to see you, Laura, everybody.